Okay, in this series of videos, we're going to look at some of the um, key things you need to know from each chapter. So the first video will focus on chapter one, and I'll probably do two small videos for chapter two and chapter three um, that I'll encourage you to watch in preparation for your SAC. So first of all, in chapter one, there's not a lot of study guide dot points. Basically, chapter one's all about relative scarcity, um, maximizing, our, maximizing efficiency, reducing opportunity cost, um, and looking at the PPF and efficiency. So first of all, the first thing about the PPF is that you often get questions about that distinction between the PPF shifting outwards or inwards or, the P or working within um, or outside the PPF. So it's really important to recognise that things that move the ship PPF outwards are things that actually increase the quality or quantity of our resources. So immigration, new technology, improvements on climatic conditions, education, all of these things are physically increasing either the quality or the quantity of our resources. That's very different to a country moving closer to their PPF, which occurs when workers work longer hours or we use idle or existing resources that are all, they're always there that we weren't using to our capacity. So if we're as, as a classroom, if we were producing goods and services and someone else entered the classroom, that would shift the PPF. But if it was just a matter of those that were working not to their productive capacity, started working harder, that would make us move closer to our PPF. So workers working longer hours does not shift the PPF, even though it sounds like it does. People work longer hours, so the fact that they could work longer hours means initially we weren't at our maximum capacity. Working within the PPF means that people are slacking off, you're not using your labour, capital or land resources to their full potential. Again, that's different to the PPF shifting inwards, which is caused by a reduction in the quality or quantity of our resources. So that would occur if people left the country, um, for emigration, so they went to other countries if they were to pass away, um, natural disasters, climate change, the death of any citizens can all shift the PPF inwards. The distinction between moving the PPF and moving closer to the PPF or being within inside the PPF is really important. Explain why the PPF is both downward sloping and bowed outwards in nature. This is another really important distinction. Okay. It says you have to use an example of two products in your answer. So the PPF is downward sloping. That signifies the fact that every decision has an opportunity cost. The more we produce of one good or service, the less that we can produce of another good or service. So what I mean by that is, you know, if we've got two things, apples and oranges, whenever we make more apples, we have to give up oranges. So the downward sloping nature of the PPF represents that every decision has an opportunity cost. Now that opportunity cost might be the same um, throughout the PPF, it might be different at different points, but the fact that it's downward sloping represents that every decision requires a trade-off. The PPF is downward sloping because every decision has an opportunity cost or you sacrifice one product whenever you make more of the other. The downward slope recognises there's opportunity cost associated with every decision. The PPF is bowed outwards to signify that resources are not equally suited to either types of good or service. So if an economy is producing robots and pizzas, some resources are better suited to robots, others are better suited to pizza. So when the PPF is bowed outwards, it means the more of a good or service we produce, the higher the opportunity cost, because we start to devote resources the less life suited to that type of production. So the thing, most people were able to explain why it's bowed outwards, but it's downward sloping just by the fact that every decision has an opportunity cost. It's bowed outwards when that opportunity cost is not constant. If the, if the PPF was simply linear and sloping downwards, that would recognise the fact that opportunity cost is constant along the PPF. Other questions? Explain how relative scarcity is related to the concept of opportunity cost. So relative scarcity means that our resources are limited relative to the demands placed on them. This forces us to make choices or makes forces economic agents to make choices. Once decisions are made about how we use our resources, we sacrifice a range of opportunities. The next best alternative is the opportunity cost. So make sure in that answer you identify that relative scarcity, scarcity means rel limited re resources relative to wants and needs. This forces us to make choices. The second best option that we forego is our opportunity cost. Explain what is meant by the following statement. Economics is about how resources are allocated amongst competing uses. Okay, really important to hear that you use an example. So economics is the study of how our scarce resources are allocated among completed, competing uses when compared to our limited resources. Our demands are infinite. We therefore need to make choices. For example, use an example in this question. As a society, we have a limited amount of labour resources or humans in the workforce. As individuals, we need to make choices about whether we're going to allocate our labour resources to become a lawyer, a doctor, work in agriculture, work in, um, become a teacher. 
the labor resources have multiple purposes, but because there's such lots of different competing uses, we need to make choices. Another good example here would be using water. So water has a range of different competing uses. It can be used for um, washing, it can be used for agriculture, it can be used for manufacturing, it can be used to wash your car, it can be used to water your plants, but it has a range of different competing uses, therefore we need to make choices about how it's best used. Explain how the provision of government financial support to flood affected groups comes at an opportunity cost. So the provision of financial assistance to flood victims means that government funds, which could have been used in other areas, are now being devoted towards the flood victims. So this money could have been spent towards education, towards health, um, but it is being used for the flood relief. In this context, the opportunity cost of providing the funds is whatever we consider to be the next best alternative use of that money. So, if, for example, as a society, if we believe that health is the next best alternative, that's the opportunity cost. Don't say that all these things are the opportunity cost, just the next best alternative. Okay, so if we put money towards the floods, that gives us less money to provide to a whole range of other areas. Whatever area we value as the next best alternative is the opportunity cost. Briefly discuss what is meant by an efficient allocation of resources. Okay, so an efficient allocation of resources occurs when a nation's resources are used across the economy in such that national living standards or welfare are maximised. Um, basically what this means is that we're minimising our opportunity costs, so when we choose the best options, and you may remember that example when I said you can swim, run or sleep when you go home, if we choose the best option, we minimise our opportunity cost. And note, so if an efficient allocation of resources means minimising opportunity costs, and it is not possible to achieve a better allocation of resources by simply shifting resources away from one activity and towards another. Explain the relationship between technical and allocative efficiency. Technical efficiency is achieved through maximising output per unit of input, having no resources wasted in the production process. If production is technically efficient and production costs are low, then more of the product can be made at also at a lower price, which then helps allow, allows consumers to satisfy more of their wants and needs, which maximises allocative efficiency. So technical efficiency, define it, maximising output per unit of input, that leads to lower prices. That then helps to allow consumers to maximise more of their wants and needs or satisfy more of their wants and needs, therefore it's more allocatively efficient. However, an increase in technical efficiency does not necessarily lead to an improvement in allocative efficiency. I'm just asking you to explain the relationship. So when is it positive, when is it not? For example, we might become more productive in producing illicit drugs, but that does not lead to an increase in society's welfare and living standards because illicit drugs cause negative externalities that can harm society. So if you get asked for the relationship, explain the positive links. Technical efficiency, lower prices, satisfy more of our wants and needs. The negative link is that technical efficiency doesn't imply we're producing what society values, and therefore it may not be maximising allocative efficiency. Last question, distinguish between allocative efficiency and dynamic efficiency. This is a question, question from last year's exam. Again, the main area of study, in, uh, sorry, topic in the first area of study is about the efficiencies. So in terms of the examiner's report, most students were able to indica indicate an understanding of both types. Um, however, many students failed, did not complete the question by providing a distinguishing feature. This meant that students could not score full marks. Here's an example of a possible response. Allocative efficiency occurs when resources are used to pro produce the combination of goods and services that best satisfies society's needs and wants, so that welfare is maximised. Dynamic efficiency refers to the speed, speed at which resources are reallocated from one area to production to another in response to a change in consumer preferences or tastes. Okay, so you define both types of efficiency. Dynamic efficiency involves promoting, pr dynamic efficiency promotes the achievement of allocative efficiency and it involves improving allocative efficiency over time. You could also say that you know, the more dynamically efficient as society, the quicker we can shift resources to where society wants them and therefore helps to achieve allocative efficiency. So dynamic efficiency is about the speed in which we reallocate resources. Allocative efficiency is more about using our resources to produce the combination of goods and services that maximises our well-being. We'll start Chapter 2 in the next video.